Welcome to hole number one of the Lakeside Nine Hole Cup. Playing here from the second tee. Now, I'm starting off here, and I've got this Thor's Hammer. Now, it's a big boy, I understand. Max top, a couple bars of right spin. You may have to accommodate this club with a higher power ball, perhaps one with some additional top spin. Um, but these are typically the way I would approach these shots. Now, I'm not going to use this club for every hole. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know. As you can see, we're also setting that up there at the plus eight with approximately half the blue ring in the right rough. Just hitting perfect here. And if you find that line ever so nicely, there is a good way to get through the trees here. As you can see, clipping it, rolling out beautifully onto the green. If you need to play a little wedge shot here, that's not too bad either. All right, so hole number two here. Now, as you'd expect from me, I'm going for the rough bump. And I've set up here with the quarterback and a navigator ball. Four back, one bar of left spin. I do have the top of that green ring just poking out of the top of the brown rough. And that tip of the ball guide is about two, two and a half balls short of the pin. I mean, this is a difficult shot. There's no way around it. It's tough to find consistency when you know the landing position is on such a slope. Um, however, I do think at the end of the day, this is probably your best chance to get the hole in one here. Uh, so I'm going to give it a rip every single time. You see, I'm giving it a little tiny bit of curl there uh, just inside the adjustment circle. Just to accommodate for that wind. Trying to get it over, but we'll have to leave our best work for the tournament. Hole three, par five, setting up here with a kingmaker and a rock. Using about one bar of backspin, three bars of right spin here. The idea is I'm going to leave myself a second shot rough bump with a long iron. So like I said, one back, three right. We make it 30 percent max adjustment here just to keep this one in line down the middle of the fairway and as you can see we got about uh well that blue ring just touching the rough on the right so it's going to depend on the level of your clubs and i know some of my clubs are a little bit higher level than if you're playing pro but if you're looking at this video from an expert perspective for, for some of the shots I, I i understand um you know you might have higher ones so this is what i've got i'm making the videos based on my play and i hope it can be of help to you uh, and hopefully somebody you know. So second shot then, looking at it with the Goliath, 6.5 bars of top spin, 2.5 bars of left spin, and we adjust here 10% max. So you can see I've got the top left corner of the yellow ring just up there on the rough. Um, it's not necessary that that's the exact spot, but you need to find that consistent landing position and then stick with it. So for me, based on the drive, I'm currently sitting on that plus four yard mark. Understand that the wind, the club, the ball, all the different circumstances that play into every shot, of course, can, you know, can make you have a different outcome than me. Perhaps a little better, perhaps a little worse. It just, uh, it's just going to depend. So always trying to give my best effort to, to get better and uh, make the shots ooh, get in the hole. I'll see you on number four. Hole number four. This is our second par three. Now, setting up this shot with a navigator ball and a quarterback, we're going to go 2.8 bars of backspin, 0.5 bars of right spin. And depending on the wind here, we actually uh, have to push back up a little bit. We are adjusting down into a hill, uh, down a hill. So we do have to accommodate for that as well. And hey, one thing I need to let you know, if you're not already familiar, I will be live streaming my pro play during the tournament, and I'll be creating notes based on the live wind conditions. So as much as you can go right now to ehrlichgaming.com, and you can download some pro notes based directly off of this video. If you want to hang out in the live stream, I will be posting notes for nine hole tournaments uh, in the pro division. So come by and check that out. I understand that not all of these shots will apply to all expert players, but the par threes, ooh, baby, any look we can get is going to be helpful. Hole number five, we're looking at another long par four here. So extra mile, kingmaker, setting us up the best we possibly can. I'm going to go, I think it's four bars of top spin here, three bars of right spin, and the adjustment is going to be 10% max. Now, the amount of topspin here, of course, you can see this fairway is not super long. It really is quite dependent on the wind direction. So be careful there. Don't go too much if you have a strong tailwind type of thing. And don't be afraid to add a little bit more if it's coming in directly into our faces. So just like that, perfect ball. You might want to add some right curl here. You're going to see this one, how close it jumps over the bunker. So keep that in mind. But this does leave us in a good position with our second shot. And the second shot, I do play it here with a sniper. Now, you could certainly consider a horizon. 
um, to have a little bit more top spin and to go from a little rough bump here. But I do think that this bounce up shot is pretty darn consistent. 4.8 bars of backspin there is what I counted out when I wasn't talking live about the shot. And I got that ball guide directly to the pin. And you can see here the direction of the wind. That's particularly why I went with the Kingmaker in this situation. You could definitely try this um, with any, you know, power three ball or, you know, I think we could probably get away with the Katana here as well. Keep that in mind. It's all a matter of taste and timing. Um, and, you know, it's all in good fun. So I hope you get good bounces. Hope we get them in the hole. We'll see you on number six. Hole number six, this one is basically disgustingly difficult <laughs> with this win that is anyway. So rock and a kingmaker here. You see the fancy ball, but it's just a, a fancy kingmaker. You can see the stats right there. Playing this one, one top, three bars of left spin. As you can see, not a lot of fairway to work with on this drive. So do tend to use a more accurate club here. Quarterback or a rock are both excellent choices so we play this shot with 10 percent max and you'll see i give this one about a third of a ball of left curl and i did have the top of the red ring touching the rough at the plus two yard mark now that yard mark only really applies if you have the same club and ball set up as me uh, and hopefully at the end of the day you just get this ball down to the end of this fairway as close to the end as possible without going over second shot you'll see here with this type of win the likelihood of me getting this one right to the pin it's pretty tough it's it is doable um but because of the way you can see how the fairway comes out with that bunker it doesn't give you much room to work with so yeah it can be done uh, maybe with a little bit better angle on the drive a little bit more to the left it gives us a little better look to the right so you gotta play with it you know that's typically the uh, the way it goes However, this one is going to get us to the green nicely in two and in the headwind conditions, of course, right? It's, this is where I, uh, you know, you just have to be realistic and decide how many balls you're willing to spend in a nine-hole tournament. That's on you. You do you. But as you can see, we're on the green nicely in two, a little close possible opportunity. But we'll see you on number seven. Hole number seven. This one, I'm setting it up with the Thor Sammer and a Kingmaker. Now, I don't think you need a Thor 7 to apply four bars of backspin and set this one up just before the green. I've got that ball guide running right to the pin. We're going to play this shot 25% mid. Now, you may have to change that elevation like always. Keep that in mind. But otherwise, this is a very straightforward setup. While you got a minute, you might as well hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of my future Golf Clash videos and live streams. I'd love to see you guys in the stream. Come on by. You can meet the great community and, you know, have a little fun and <clears throat> see if we can't get some booms. Hole number eight, and this would be a good place to play that Thor's Hammer. However, we're using the big topper and a Zerk. Maximum top spin here, and we're going to adjust this shot 10% max. The idea being that we're going to put ourselves in position so that we can make a rough bump on that second shot. So like I said here, 10% max on your nice clean adjustment. The thing with the big topper, you need to really be careful not to hit great. Because I'm telling you, if you hit great, Ooh, you're going to put yourself in trouble on this hole. So don't do it. Keep it in mind. Yes, you can hit perfect every single time. Now, bump there, rolling over. It gets us nicely down the second fairway. This hole, for some reason, reminds me just of hole number nine. But anyway, staying focused here. Second shot, Goliath. We're playing that rough bump at 15% maximum distance. I give this one five bars of top spin, one right spin and as you can see we're just going to get the tip of that ball guide right to the hole actually slightly through the hole excuse me in this wind uh at least a square or so if you had a tailwind uh, that's when you probably want to leave it a little bit short i learned that from tommy i know you did too so clean adjustment 15 max there and you know goliath is such a good rough bump and club it gives us lots of room to work with all that top spin i love these kind of shots just look at that comes in beautifully rolling in that long green oh baby come on now we'll see you on nine hole number nine last call this is your last chance for romance set it up here with a kingmaker and a big topper max top and i give this one about a half a bar of right spin now the thing about this one with this kind of wind Again, you could definitely play a Thor's Hammer here, something with good top spin, but we're going to have to go max OP here. Anytime you're going to max overpower with the big topper, you need to do what you need to do. You got to make peace with your own 
And uh, hey, all in good fun though. This is a video game. No guts, no glory. So here we go. Grip it and rip it. Now, mm, you're going to see. Remember how I talked about hitting perfect? That didn't quite happen. Perfect would be ideal. You know, I don't need to explain that to you. However, this does demonstrate that there's a little bit of wriggle room here. A little wiggle wiggle. Uh, and we can still get it out nicely onto that second fairway. Second fairway now. Once we're here, we're going to load up with that Goliath. And as you can see, we're sizing it up. Uh, we're going to be approximately mid-distance here. If you want to use that slider, get it going. Be my guest. 0% mid-distance is the way I'm going to play this one. Uh, actually, 30% slider. You see, I knew I did something there. Four and a half bars of topspin. And looking at this rough bump with the Goliath, you know how it is. Guys, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. I'm always posting Golf Clash content. And I'm looking for ideas all the time of what else you might want to see. It's uh, it's an incredible community, and I'm very, very pleased to be a member of it. And this shot, ooh, baby, I'm, uh, I'm pleased to share this one with you. If you like the video, comments, questions, or concerns, please don't be afraid to leave a comment in the comment section. Hit that thumbs up button on your way out the door. Thank you very, very much. Good luck to you in the Lakeside Nine Hole Cup.